May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our heart be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our Savior, our Healer, and Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Today's gospel tells us two stories of Jesus' power to heal. Whenever I preach on this text, I usually focus on the first part of it, the story of the Syrophoenician woman's encounter with Jesus as she approaches him to heal her demon-possessed daughter, because it's important to highlight the stories of women in the Bible. It's an example of Jesus interacting with a Gentile woman when most people of his time, including his own disciples, believed that the main focus of his ministry was bringing salvation to the Jewish people. Here we have a story of Jesus getting into a conversation with a non-Jewish person about his compassionate message of healing that is going beyond the usual scope of his ministry. Jesus is seen to be reaching out to the Gentiles who also need to hear his message of salvation. It is a great story of acceptance and love as we see the scriptural account of the gospel spreading out to other peoples beyond the Jews of ancient Israel. And yes, Jesus heals her daughter after her mother has shown such faith in Jesus' power to heal. However, today, instead of glossing over the second half of this passage, I plan to pay some attention to the deaf-mute man who is healed by Jesus in the second part of this gospel passage from Mark. Let us just recap his story. At this point in his ministry, Jesus has left Tyre. He has traveled near to the region of the Decapolis, which was a confederation of 10 cities just southeast of the Sea of Galilee. Some people come to Jesus and bring along their friend who cannot hear and has a speech impediment. He is in need of healing. So Jesus listens to the man. He listens deeply and with abundant patience. I recently listened to an interview with Evelyn Glennie. She is an extraordinary musician, a percussionist. She has won several Grammy Awards and has collaborated with many musicians. She's a Polar Music Prize laureate. She's performed around the world. She composed music for an Oscar-winning film and led a thousand drummers at the opening ceremony of the 2012 London Olympics. And if that isn't extraordinary enough, what is even more extraordinary is that she is deaf. It seems a contradiction that uh, she is deaf but also a percussionist. She became deaf when she was a girl of eight, and she obviously is incredibly gifted, and she's also an amazing listener. Evelyn Glennie says that her job is all about listening. She aims to teach the world to listen. She says, listening is the glue to humanity, is the thing that creates a bridge between one person and another, whether that is spoken word, the written word, or whether there are no words. It's that presence. And so we always think that in order to listen, it has to come from a sound. So we must hear something. But actually listening really is about paying attention. It is about literally being in that present moment. We often believe that we only hear with our ears. Our ability to hear, our sense of hearing, is centered on our ears, although I think it's the brain as well <laughs> is where our hearing is centered. And Evelyn Glennie encourages us to listen with our whole being, our fingers, our hands, our arms, our body. In her opinion, we need to allow our bodies to open up and be like a resonating chamber so we can really listen to each other. Our feelings, our sense of wellness affect how we listen and what we hear. When we listen with our bodies, we hear more than when we just use our ears to hear. Listening is more than a sound. It is body language and interpretation. We need patience and time to interpret what we hear when we listen deeply. We need to be open. Jesus listens with his whole heart and body. That is what he did with a Syrophoenician woman and what he does with a deaf man. He listens to their needs. He sees them and does not look away. Being seen is an important part of their encounter with the Son of God. It makes them feel that they matter and Jesus cares about them. They feel heard and seen by Jesus when most people ignore them. When Jesus heals the deaf man, he does it privately, one-on-one. -on -one. 
There are no distractions or interruptions from the crowd. Jesus is fully focused on the man and listening. And Jesus puts his fingers on the man's ear and speaks the words, be opened. Jesus' touch helped the man to hear those words. And the man is healed and he can speak plainly. He can be understood and he can listen. Jesus opened him up to healing, opened him to listening and speaking, opened him to vulnerability. If the man had not been open to Jesus' healing power, then he might not have been able to have the opportunity to listen again. The man is now open to being attentive to those around him, to be able to hear and feel their pain, their passion, their courage, their love and forgiveness, to deeply listen to those around him. A bridge has been built to connect him to other people. Most importantly, the man is open to listening to Jesus. After this healing, his belief has been affirmed that Jesus is not just a preacher and rabbi, but a healer who listens to and sees those around him in need. Jesus did not ignore that man. Jesus was patient and took time to listen. He took time to process and decipher the sound that surrounded him. Jesus used his ability to listen to build a bridge between himself and the deaf man, as well as to the Syrophoenician woman. Jesus ensures that nothing takes him away from his attentiveness to others. His actions speak words of love, service, comfort, compassion, forgiveness, understanding, and tolerance. Jesus becomes the resonating chamber of all we say to him. He has that great capacity to listen and heal. He gives us those moments. Openness requires listening, and openness requires some vulnerability on our part and on God's part, too. God already made God's self vulnerable when God became human in the person of Jesus, especially coming into the world as an infant, the most vulnerable form of humanity. In that act of living amongst us as a human being, God showed God's willingness to be fully open to our human experience, even open to death. And God is open to relationship. Closing ourselves off from God and each other brings challenges and isolation. Openness allows us to give ourselves permission to take on new ideas, new feelings, new expressions, new insights, and in how God is speaking to us, encouraging us to serve, to love, to care, to comfort. Openness is what we get in in our relationship with God. And God encourages us to be open in our communication to God in our prayers, to really listen to what God is saying to us and to build that bridge to the divine, to really listen to each other as we are in all of our glorious imperfections and growing edges, working out our faith, being open to God, working in us and through us, transforming us on this wild journey with Jesus, our companion, with whom we take this journey. It is important to listen, and as Evelyn Glennie sees as her life's, and she sees this as her life's work. In her life and in the story of Jesus' healing of the deaf man, we see that the deaf do hear. They hear differently than we, but they hear. And she admits that listening can be exhausting. To be a better listener, we need to work at it every day. She doesn't really see listening as having a particular system or method that one can practice. She says it is just more of an awareness thing. It belongs to us all. It can prove the quality of our work, the work that we do, our relationships, and patience with ourselves, because listening has to start from the inside. As Jesus taught us, listening is a heart thing, a presence thing, a holy thing that leads to healing and building the bridging work of relationships. Our faith in a loving, patient, and forgiving God and Savior encourages us to listen to each other and to be thankful for that healing act of listening. It is heart work and healing work at the deepest level. And we give thanks that we always have the full attention of our resurrected Savior who always listens to us. Amen. <laughs>